Hey girlies, what is up? It's Carmen. Welcome back to the pod. So happy you're here. This week is all about boys stories, stories about dating, crushes, awkward stories, funny stories, sad stories, stories that taught you a lesson, whatever. They're all here and these are stories that you guys submitted. So make sure to stick around to see if yours is featured. So exciting. So before we get into that, though, let's just get into the best and worst of the week. So the best of the week was just that here in Kentucky, the weather has gotten a lot warmer. So it's been really nice this past week. It's been pretty much which is warm for this time of year. So it's great. And I'm loving it. I actually shaved my legs yesterday, which was a big a big feat a big thing because it's winter and like why but because it's getting warm so I can wear a dress or a skirt this week so I did that so yay me pat on the back yay and another thing that was good was that last night I facetimed Seth my guy best friend who also yeah I'm recording this on Sunday because I've been procrastinating this like a lot um I don't know why I just wasn't in the mood really to record, but here we are. It's middle of the day Sunday and ready to crank this out. I really hope the audio is better. Sorry about last week. I was getting lots of messages about that. I really don't know what was happening. I think when I was editing it, I kind of messed something up and I didn't really save the original audio before I started editing. So it got all wonky and I'm very sorry about that. Fingers crossed that this week is better. Hoping it won't sound like I'm underwater this time. Um, We will see. But yeah, so last night I FaceTimed Seth, which was fun. And then also my sister, who, in case none of you do, which I doubt any of you do know because I haven't said anything about this on any of my social medias or in the, pod- in the podcast podcast episodes, yeah, that my entire family, except for me, is currently in Miami having a vacation because my two siblings, Hadley and Reed, who go to boarding school, have their break this week, so they're just doing some fun beaching while I'm staying at the house, going to school. It is day three of being home alone. I'm just with the cat. Tilly is with another family. That's my dog in case you didn't know, but it's been quiet. I haven't really been doing much. I mean, I watched all of Ginny and Georgia, who, if you haven't watched it, please watch it. I know a lot of people don't want to watch it because of, like, the Taylor Swift thing. That was, like, one second, and also, the show was good, okay? The show was good. Um, you might be asking, Carmen, why was the show so good? Marcus. Marcus. Just period. Just, if you don't know who he is, look him up right now. Like, X out of this. You can keep it playing. Just like go to Google and look up Marcus from Ginny and Georgia or watch the TikTok edits of him. Oh my God. Literally, I was watching those for an hour yesterday. Also, another big thing. I was so proud of myself yesterday. Ready? Everybody, moment of silence. Yesterday, I worked out for the first time in like forever. And honestly, it was kind of fun. I mean, it was only a 15-minute dance workout from YouTube, but considering I usually don't really work out that often, I'm saying usually as in I I never work out, okay? I know it's bad, but in school we did this thing. It was like some mental health checkup, and it was like areas you can improve on in your life. It was like your diet, sleep, exercise, and then coping skills or whatever, and all of mine were pretty good except for exercise, which I got... I think, the worst score on. So now I'm going to try to exercise more. Me saying this and never working out again. I'm going to try to exercise more and just do fun things I can find on YouTube that are easy and that should be good. So the worst of the week, there was nothing that was really that bad. Just being home alone kind of sucks. I mean, it's just really quiet. It's... I like being home alone. I love the quiet, but there gets to be a certain point where you start talking to yourself and kind of feel like you're going crazy, you know, but the good thing, the good thing about this is that I'm going to school in person, so I'll be able to see people during the week, which is good, because if not, if I had to be online and be home for like nine days by myself, I would actually go insane, I think. 
So grateful for school. Who would have who would have thought? But nothing really bad has happened this week. Been a pretty chill week, honestly. I don't even remember. I'm I don't even know. Okay, but anyways, we're talking about boys today, dating, crushes, doesn't boys, girls, whatever. Whoever you like, and that's okay. Um so Actually, on my stories, I asked you guys what you wanted to see for another story time because a lot of people were saying they thought it was super fun to send things in and it kind of makes it more like a group experience, you know? So, this episode was in popular demand and I'm here for it. I'm very excited. I was looking at some of the stories earlier and I don't really know how many I picked. Maybe a ten. Maybe, let me look at my camera while I took screenshots. Uh, probably, yeah, around 10-ish. But some of them are pretty long, but I think it'll be good. I'm super excited. And yeah, again, sorry, no quote of the week. I'm thinking, though, let me know what you guys think. You can DM me or something. But I'm thinking about doing one of these story time like episodes once a month. And then have normal episodes the other time, but, like, have a once a month story time so that once a month, like, you guys can pick the topic and then we can all just send in our short stories. I'll share mine and then, obviously, you guys will send in yours and then I'll share them. And then I think that'd be fun because then it can be something more consistent. But let me know if you think or if you don't want any more story time episodes. You're like, Carmen, these are boring. I hate these. Please stop. Then we'll just go back. Because I'm thinking after this story time episode, we're going to go back to some of the more advice pods. Because I know a lot of y'all love that. And there's a lot of things I still need to talk about. But yeah, don't forget to leave a review, subscribe, follow, do all the things things. You already know I say this two times in every episode, so go make sure you do it and I'll love you forever. And before we get into it, I'm going to take a quick water break and I'll be right back. And I'm back! Hey guys! Okay, so let's just get into it. I'm just gonna go in on the order that I took the pictures on my phone. Again, so I don't get confused because on my camera roll, all the pictures look the exact same. So, Make sure you stay around to the end so you can hear all the best ones. First story, I'm super excited. Okay, it says, I was talking to my crush and all of a sudden he says I need to talk to you. So I got all excited and he looked at me and asked and asked to date me. And I said yes, but after I said yes, he told me it was just a dare. First of all, like how immature is this dude? And second of all, I remember people doing this in middle school. So I'm assuming this was from middle school. Because if it was from high school, then like, grow up. (laughs) You know, also, sorry if I sound nasally. I, I don't know. I woke up and my allergies were really bad this morning. So hopefully I don't sound too gross. I mean, I'm sure anything will be better than last week's episode. Though... The sad part about that was that last week was one of my favorite episodes. It just happened that the audio was so messed up that, I don't know, I don't know if you could hear everything. But I'm sorry, this is the absolute worst when you think someone likes you, and especially that this person was your crush. That, that is so rough. Okay, next one. It says, when I was nine, I had a crush on this guy who I argued with all the time. We bantered a lot and teased each other, and one time I didn't have a comeback, so I just blurted out, I love you. You know what also that makes me think of? Do you know how it's like those guys that you talk to just for a week, and then they're like, oh my god, I love you so much, and you're like, no you don't. No you don't. There was actually one time, funny story, um, this guy who I wasn't really talking to, we were just kind of friends, and he snapchat me, and he was like, I like you. And I I said, no, you don't. I said, you don't even know me. Like, we don't even talk that much. What do you mean you like me? Like, sir, what are you talking about? Also, why did I kind of sound country for a second? Does that happen to you guys? I swear sometimes I have an accent and sometimes I don't. I mean, obviously, if you're... Sometimes I have a southern accent. Whenever I go around people who have southern accents, mine comes out or... If, I'm in a hillbilly area, I'll, I'll like start talking like this, you know, 
and say y'all or whatever. Say, mom, can you, can you pick me up? Like, can you pick me up, please? Please pick me up. Take me home. <laughs> Take me. I need help. Oh my god. Yeah, I would, I would be crying. But I mean, you were also nine, so again, that's not that bad. It'd be really funny, though, if you were in high school and did this, because, I don't know, I just think that'd be funny, because I know people who, um, my friends, when they're talking to someone, the guy will say, oh my gosh, I love you so much, and they've been talking for three days. I say, what are you talking about? One, you're talking over Snapchat, so you don't really know this person. Two... It's been three days. This is similar to, you know, in a book when the characters, they say, I love you for the first time. And you're like, bro, okay, can you just slow this down? You've known each other for three chapters. What? What is happening? That always happens to me. I personally, I prefer the slow burn where... They don't even touch until, like, page 300, okay? It just, the tension is what makes it, like, mwah, chef's kiss. If they're having sex and he, you know. <laughs> so, that would never happen, though, because that's toxic. Apparently. Apparently. Whatever, it's okay. Do you ever feel like you're never gonna have a boyfriend ever again and you're just gonna die alone. Does anyone feel like that? I feel... I feel like that is a little bit dramatic, but also not really at this point. Because truly, I haven't even talked to anybody since last winter. That turned out to be this... His name was Connor. He went to my sister's boarding school. He was absolutely adorable. He gives me um, Golden Retriever vibes, but also, like, a puppy puppy vibes. He was so cute. He had brown curly hair, you know, white boy brown hair. I was like, oh, my God. Obsessed. So we started talking over Snapchat, and he was really cute. And I was thinking, oh, my gosh, I like him so much can't wait till I can visit my sister at school and then see him. Yeah, so that didn't work out. Turns out that he was a drug addict and was supposed to go to rehab, but somehow he got out of that because of COVID. And also while he was quote unquote talking to me, he was also still trying to get over his ex who was, I think, two years younger than him. So that was a lot of drama that I was not about and now now I've kind of given up on men I think it's also really hard since I deleted snapchat to kind of talk to people because I know that sounds stupid but in my opinion I think most people talk to guys or girls whatever on snapchat at least at first or that's how they'll meet someone else because I mean at least right now if you're not going to the same school as someone you're not really gonna see them because of corona but I don't know I really feel like it'd be stupid if I just downloaded snapchat again just so I can talk to a boy but I don't know also this summer I'm going on a trip with a uh, family friends so that's exciting and then Later, I'm going to Nantucket to be with my cousins for, I think, two months or something. I'm going to work there. Apparently, I don't know if this is actually happening, but last time I heard. And I keep thinking, Nan also, if you don't know, Nantucket's an island in Massachusetts. But I keep thinking how cool it would be if I just met some cute guy in Nantucket who then we started dating and then I can have a beach boyfriend, vacation boyfriend. It just sounds goals okay sorry that was me ranting about literally nothing for no reason um next story next story this says okay I had a huge there's a lot of ease in that <laughs> crush on this guy and we were friends for so long but everyone knew we had crushes on each other besides us then over the summer before we started high school I worked up the courage and told him but he was moving away 
and I was, of course, sad, but he said he still liked me. Over the next couple months, we had a texting long-distance type of quote-unquote relationship, and this mofo was all like, I love you, etc., etc., but at the same time, saying we weren't in a relationship because he doesn't like long distance. Long story short, he would ignore me for a month, then come back and be like, oh my, OMG, I love you, and then ignore me and come back. Then I found out from him that he had a new girlfriend at his new school, and I was kind of jilted. Oh, that's an interesting word jilted okay sorry and I was kind of jilted but at the same time I had no right to be possessive because now we weren't really dating it all ended during Christmas break then he said that he doesn't deserve to be my quote-unquote friend and we haven't talked since and tbh it took me a long time to recover okay first of all this guy sounds like he sucks um if he in my opinion I think we can all agree to this one but usually if you have a girlfriend, you don't talk to other girls and you stop talking to those girls if you have a girlfriend. That's just common decency, first of all. And saying, <laughs> when people say I love you but don't mean it, that's kind of funny. But also, I'm sorry, this sounds sucky. And I mean, I think you do have a right to be mad. And that I don't think that's being possessive. I think that you have a right to be mad because I know this type of story has happened to a lot of my friends where you're talking to some guy. It turns out they're talking to someone else too. Like, you have a right to be pissed. They suck. That's their fault. That has nothing to do with you. Like, they suck. You have a right to be mad and you should, like, punch them in the face. Don't actually, but, like... In your mind, have your mind punch their mind with your words. Oh, God, sometimes I can't with myself. Okay, tell me why all these stories are from fourth grade. <laughs> this one says, in fourth grade, the new kid had a huge crust on me and would play with me all the time. Everyone started shipping the both of us, but I hated it when people shipped us because I didn't like him. One page from his diary even revealed that he wished I would be his girlfriend. In fifth grade, however, I realized that he is super, super nice, respectful, kind, and caring. He was like this towards me, and it made me realize that I fell in love with his personality and never the looks. Oh. And in the eighth grade, we were no longer at the same school together. Because in fifth to sixth... Because in fifth to sixth grade, I shipped them a lot. They broke up later. Also, does kissing someone's cheek count as your first kiss? No, right? Um, I would say no. It does not. I think first kiss means lips on lips. Um, but he basically dated my girl best friend from that school, which never ever bothered me at all. Honestly, I don't even remember my first kiss. If I'm... That's... Is that bad? Uh, all I remember is that, um, my first kiss was with some of my boyfriend freshman year. I remember I swerved him, like, three times, and then I was finally like, yeah, okay. It was, I don't know, it was awkward. I don't even rem remember. Also, yeah, no, I would say that does not count. Also, I love, <laughs> I love how you said hugging and kissing cheeks <laughs> to show you were that in love. Um, LOL. <laughs> I love, this makes me just realize how cute it was to be, like, little again. Because, I mean, I don't know. It's kind of cute. It makes me sad. But also, if you didn't, <laughs> I think it's hard to actually want to date someone if you don't even think they're physically attractive. I mean, obviously, like, a friend, but, like, a boyfriend, girlfriend, if you're not physically attracted to them either. Because then, if you just like their personality... That's pretty much just a friend, right? I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Do you think you have to be physically attracted to someone to date them? Or can you just like their personality? Questions, questions, questions. But also the funny thing, I feel like, is when you start talking to someone, you're like, oh, they're not that, they're not that cute, but I'm bored, whatever, right? Because, I mean, you do have to look at them. Of course, you can love someone's personality, but it helps if you're 
physically attracted to them. I mean, I don't think you can have a relationship with someone. And then (laughs) they just, the more you talk to them, the quote unquote cuter they get, right? (laughs) I mean, I feel like there's always some people where I'll think they're attractive for a little bit and then I'll start finding things that I'm like, "Mm, maybe not. There's only one guy, one guy that I have never like been able to find something that I don't like about him. And um, I'm not, do I say who it is? Mm, Do I expose myself? Yeah, sure. My brother's best friend. Okay. Attack me all you want. Attack me all you want. Um, T. There, there is the hot T. He is, T is really hot though. Um, ooh, buddy. Yeah. Okay. This one is very long, but I really like it, and I know who it's from, and I told her I would feature it, so here we go. Okay, it says, this story, this is the story of my highly dramatic nightmare first homecoming date. Hoko is not a big deal at my school, but everyone goes to the dance, especially freshmen. My freshman year, I wasn't looking to get asked to homecoming because I didn't have a crush on any of the guys. Anyways, there was this guy, let's call him Landon. Landon and I weren't really friends, but we talked sometimes. So it shocked me when Landon made a very public Hoko proposal. Landon was always really nice to me, and he said we would just be going as friends. So I said yes. Landon asked me a week before Hoko, though, so I already had set plans with my friends who didn't have any dates. Landon and I talked it out, and he agreed, since he also already had plans, that it would be best to combine our groups for the pictures, but do dinner separately because of our already made reservations. We clear, we very clearly mutually agreed upon this, and I thought everything was okay. So fast forward to the day of the dance. We go to the pictures, and to be honest, it would it was so awkward. My friends didn't know his friends too well, and the pictures were so awkward. On top of that, my p- mom had to pin a boutonniere on him because I couldn't do it. Is that how you say that? I don't even know. It's the little flower, the flower thing, Um, I think. It says, anyways, we took our pictures and headed opposite ways for dinner. We said goodbye and promised to meet up again at the dance. Once I arrived at the dance after dinner, I couldn't find Landon at all. I asked around for him and a bunch of people told me that he was really upset with me and told everyone that I was being a bad date. I finally found him and I confronted him. I confronted him on why he would tell people that. He brushed it off and told me that he thought that I had ditched him. I told him that it wasn't true and we could leave it all behind and have fun now. Yes, go you. We danced with our group for a little bit, but every time we were alone, it was kind of awkward. It came time for for a slow dance and we just awkwardly stood next to each other the whole time. Okay, but if you think this story is awkward, this is this not only gets awkward, but straight up dramatic. His really good friend and my kind of friend, let's call her Mila, after, um, okay, after a while, linked arms with me and never let us be alone for the rest of the night. Wherever we were, she was. It was eventually nearing the end of the le- night, 11.30 p.m., near the end of the dance, and my mom was the one who was driving all my friends home. I told Landon that I had to go, and he said bye and walked us out. I thought that while the night was awkward due to us and because of Mila, he wouldn't leave us alone, that it was overall fine. However, when I got to school on Monday, everyone was coming up to me and asking if everything was really true. I was like, true? What's true? It turns out that after the dance, Landon had told his friends who told a bunch of other people that going to Hoko with me was a nightmare. He told me that I had ignored him the whole night and I ditched him at dinner and left him at the dance. He told everyone that I was a 4 out of 10 date person and prettiness. 4 out of 10, basically rating people on a scale of 1 to 10, is apparently okay. On top of this, I found out that he only asked me out because he knew Mila liked him and he didn't want to lead her on. I had no idea that Mila liked him in TBH. I would have never said yes if I knew because we were kind of friends. Because he asked me out, I found out that during the whole time, Mila was also saying stuff behind my back and spreading rumors. I was honestly so upset of this because upset about after all of this because I thought that I had clearly communicated with Landon and what our plans were. 
We had these conversations and we both mutually agreed. We agreed to have separate dinners. I asked him if this was all okay and if it wasn't, I would find a way to make it work. Instead of talking to me about what the problem was, he decided to spread rumors and call me a 4 out of 10. It caused unnecessary drama with Mila. I don't think it was nice or mature of her to spread rumors about me and just because I was going on a quote-unquote date with a guy she liked, but we were friends and I didn't want to spread drama with her. After the whole incident and the whore 4 out of 10 thing, people in her grade made it a thing not to ask me to Hoka because I was a quote-unquote bitch. In the end, I could see why he was upset with me. However, that does not elicit him to calling me a quote-unquote bitch, quote-unquote 4 out of 10. I wish we would have communicated better and things were different. He never really apologized and we haven't spoken since. That was my nightmare first Hoko date. First of all, what a me trying not to have cursed this whole episode so I can not, I don't have to mark it as explicit. Do you guys know how hard that is? Okay, whatever, who cares, I give up. What a fucking asshole, okay? I'm gonna beat the shit out of this man. Seriously, why couldn't he just ask the girl he liked? I mean, you're in, you're in high school, dude. Just ask the girl you like and don't, like, ask someone else and pretend to like them and then just say you like the other girl. Also, rating people? Come on. And first of all, you are not a 4 out of 10. You're a 10 out of 10 and it's just a mean boy who's giving you a mean rating because he sucks and he's not happy with his life and he sounds very insecure and also I think you did do a good job of communicating at least from what you said it sounds like he was just trying to cause drama and make things into a bigger thing than it actually was which I mean also rude that he never apologized for that because you can't just rate someone a four out of ten and call them a bitch and invite them to Hoko even though 100% you are not a bitch um I love you so much and you're not a bitch. You are the sweetest person ever, okay? And he just sucks. He's just a random freshman boy who, he sucks, and um, we're gonna all send him negative energy, because we can, so do it. Okay, <laughs> peer pressure. Okay, next story. So I really love that one. Thank you for all the detail. Uh, I hope you guys like that one. So this says, so about a year ago, I was super close with this guy. We had been friends for like three years, but we weren't really close until 2020. I slowly started to catch feelings for him, but I wasn't sure if he liked me back. I was planning on confessing to him, but a couple, but a couple of days before I was going to tell him, I found out that he was gay. Um, yeah. That was kind of awkward. I literally had no idea. It was weird for a while, but we're still friends now, just not as close, LMAO. Um, <laughs> first of all, that's, I'm sorry, that's just funny. It's, uh, it's funny, it's funny. I know my friend, Seth, he always jokes about that his mom only dated gay guys in high school. Um, but I don't know, that just made me think of her. I'm sorry, that's, I feel bad, but also that's kind of funny. Um... At least you guys are still friends. I mean, that's good. Right? Honestly, I feel bad for if anyone, like the gay people uh, or people in the LGBTQ plus community that go to my school, because I go to a small private school, right? And I feel like everyone's so scared to come out because they don't want people to say anything. Though I do know like half the girls in the senior class at my school are bi, which I mean is kind of cool. But I'm, I'm very sorry. It's okay. Now you have a friend. Uh, that's good. Okay. I'm gonna give a warning for this next story. It is the one that, um, is slightly concerning. Well, not slightly. It's very concerning. And whoever sent this story, um, I really suggest that you go to therapy. Not telling you what to do, but maybe that would help. It seems to have some unresolved issues in it I just want to give that warning um yeah okay I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go I'm just gonna go <laughs> it says this one time I had a crush on my uncle when I was younger because he was very buff and very handsome 
For some reason, my family didn't like him, but I thought they were just being judgy. He was in a branch of the military and was super nice. He would teach me wrestling moves, and we had lots of fun together. Come to find out, he was dating a 13-year-old girl. At the same time, he was married to my aunt, and he was 30. He is now in jail for life. Um, um, child predator. Child predator. What is that called? Pedophile. Fucking pedophile. Okay. Um, I'm glad he's in jail, but also, like, that's scary. And wrestling? Um, I really hope that you were okay and that he never actually, like, touched you or hurt you because that sounds very scary but I just wanted to include this one mainly so that I could say this that if someone is physically hurting you or if some older man is giving you unwanted attention get like pepper spray rape whistle um go to therapy that that might help and be a a good idea um Yeah. I mean, I guess this is a crush you shouldn't have. I would strongly advise you not to, let's not do incest, guys. Um, no cousins, no, no brothers, sisters, whatever. Let's not do that. I mean, you know, like in Game of Thrones, there's incest, but you're like, "Mm, it's kind of weird, but also it's not that weird. No, it is weird. So, Let's not do that. Or that one book, what is it called? Clockwork. What is that called? It's the book where the two siblings fall in love by like Cassandra Clare. It's like clockwork. If you know it, you're probably yelling at me right now. Oh my God, what is that called? Whatever, I don't know, but we're not going to do that. We're not going to fall in love with our brothers. Let's not do that. Um, They're your relative. I say off limits. And I'm very glad that this man is in jail. Because he sounds scary. Uh, Moving on, moving on. I hope you understood my message and our therapy. And if you don't want to, like, actually go to therapy, do one of those text things. I don't know the number. But, like, those hotlines. When I was in seventh grade, I dated this boy, Sean. He was a sweet kid, but one of those boys... One of those boys who you feel sorry for because no one likes them, so you just tell him that you like him. He lived a few blocks down from me, and since I wasn't allowed to date till I was 16, I would go over to his house without my dad knowing, and we would hang out. So one day, we go to McDonald's because we agreed to it that it could be our first date. Exciting. With his grandmother driving us and in the building? Like, okay then. This boy goes up to order our food and then at the end goes, can I have an apple tree? Like, no, buddy, no. I will never forget his grandmother laughing, him laughing at himself for saying it and me standing there like, what am I even doing here? We dated for six months and I still feel sorry for him, but he isn't cute enough to get it again, no matter how sorry I feel for him. Okay, first of all, (laughs) I feel like pity dating. That's so relatable. Um, right there with you. Right there with you. I think we should normalize, though. Like, if you don't like someone, saying no so that we don't hurt their feelings later on and say, hey, so I actually never really liked you, but I just said yes as like a pity date. So maybe we just say no right off the bat because that's easier to handle. I know I need to work on that too. Um, and also McDonald's as a first date, that is, that is interesting, but also like iconic. And the grandma was there. Oh, you already, you already know it's going to be a party with Nana over there, right? Also, I was talking about this with my friends the other day about, it was like, what would you want to be called when you're a grandmother, right? And all of us were pretty much like, Nana, 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 me, 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 ma. I was trying to think of um ones that just sound like random noises, you know? Because I think a lot of grandmother names just sound so funny. I love Nana. Like, Nana sounds so cute. I want to be a Nana. That just sounds like a baddie. Like, Nana. Hey, Nana. What up? What up? What up? You know? Okay. 
Anyway. I joined a new friend group with boys and it was the and it was one of the first times we all hung out together and we watched the Super Bowl. After the halftime show, we watched a scary movie. I don't do too well in scary movies. There was this one really cute boy and somehow I started talking to him and I told him that I didn't like scary movies and he said, do you want me to sit next to you in a fucking course? Oh my God. That sounds so dumb when you say that aloud. I always type that a fucking course. What? I don't think I've ever said that out loud. I always type that though. I'm just going to say, of course. And of course I said yes. He would lean over and through the entire movie and tell me when to close my eyes. Oh, cute. At one point I got really scared and literally started shaking and he went with me downstairs and we just chilled and ate Magnum ice cream bars till the movie was over. <laughs> A week went by and it was Valentine's Day weekend and we went out. I haven't seen him since because of Corona, but I'm scared I'll do something wrong. Any advice? Oh, okay. First of all, like cute. I remember the only time I've ever watched a scary movie was Against My Will with my freshman year boyfriend. Um, We watched The Shining, which it helped to think of it more as funny than scary. So that's what I do if you're looking for ways to not be so scared of the scary movies. But that's so cute that he was trying to comfort you and left, even left the room with you. That's really cute. Also, that's fun that you went on a date. Um, definitely talk to him. I mean, I don't think you can mess it up. I mean, prob the best thing to do is just to say hi, start talking again. But I mean, if he hasn't tried to reach out, maybe then he doesn't want to talk or maybe he's waiting for you to reach out, you know? So, I mean, you might as well just like catch up and say like, hey, what's up? How are you? You know, and just be nice about that. I mean... It's not like you have to date, but if you like him, I would talk to him. I don't think, I think the thing that would go wrong is that if you're just waiting for him to say something, but also he's waiting for you to say something, so then nothing's going to happen. So moral of the story, just, just say something and it, it'll be good. Okay. During my freshman year of high school, one of my guy friends told me, I like you, and then he literally sprinted away as far as he possibly could before I had time to respond. A couple hours later in math class, he threw a note at my desk. I felt so awkward. I felt, and I felt so awkward. So I put the note in my backpack and didn't even read it. I was too busy trying to think of a way to kindly reject my friend without it being too awkward. Yikes. I ended up not opening the note until I got on the bus and all the notes said, was, in case you didn't hear what I said, I said, I like you. <laughs> I was so confused about what I should do. I didn't feel the same way, but I had no clue how to tell him that. Then, less than five seconds later, I looked over at my phone and he DM'd me and asked me if I liked him back. I replied and said no. The next day, I was so anxious because I knew that I was going to bump into him since we had a couple classes together. While I was sitting in class, he walked up to me he walked up to me. I just stared at him blankly and he said, I'm so sorry. And then I told him it was all good. And then we continued being friends and never spoke of it again. It was as if it never happened. I know that story wasn't <laughs> too juicy, but it's the only boy related one I have. Um, I love that note. That was good. Don't apologize. That was good. Let's also make it a thing to say sorry less. I know I need to work on that. I'm sure literally everybody needs to work on that unless you're a baddie and don't say sorry but <laughs> this is kind of funny I'm trying to imagine this you're just in the hallway and someone walks up to you and they're like I like you and then they do like the Naruto run thing or whatever and just run down the hallway I'm sorry but if he actually liked you say it in person you know but also I think another lesson the best thing if you don't like someone tell them straight up because it's going to hurt their feelings a lot less if you tell them right now than if you just, like, pretend you like them. And then, like, when you're mad or in the heat of the moment and then you say, you yell and be like, well, I never liked you anyway, you know? So, there's my advice. But I just, this reminds me of one time, I don't remember when it was, sometime in middle school, I was getting stuff packed up for my locker 
And I was on the phone with my mom because I was trying to see if she was there to pick me up. And this guy who I'm friends with named Evan walks over to me and I'm obviously on the phone, obviously trying to pack up my backpack, not really focused on what he's saying. And he walks over to me and he taps me on the shoulder and he's like, do you want to go out? And I was literally standing there on the phone with my mom when he asked me this. And I was like, uh, no. So, I mean, I don't know. If you're going to tell someone, make sure you have their full attention, life lesson. And also, don't be afraid of rejection. And don't be afraid of being honest, okay? You're saving everybody a lot less time. And then it'll be easier just to get over, you know? I don't know. That's just my opinion. This last one is iconic. (laughs) I had a crush on a boy. Then I didn't. Then I had a crush on his twin brother. Then I didn't. The end. Yeah, so T, I know who this is. Um, T, you're an icon. I love you. Um, you're literally my favorite person in the entire world. Um, ooh, that, this just reminds me of the Vampire Diaries, you know, with Elena liking both of them. Also, I haven't even watched the Vampire Diaries since eighth grade and I'm a junior now. So, I mean, I don't really remember. All I remember is that Damon and Stefan were brothers and she liked both of them. This is like that. So you're practice, practically Elena from TVD, which I mean is like kind of depressing because she sucks, but also you're kind of an icon and I love you. So pop off, okay, I guess. <laughs> pop off when you when you like him and then you like his brother. Also, I'm sorry that they both rejected you. I would make so many TikToks about that. It's just so funny. It really is. It's just so funny. Okay, guys. Those were all of your amazing, amazing stories. You guys are the absolute best. Thank you for sending all these in. I mean, honestly, you guys make the the story time episodes. You make them better or worse. I don't know. Uh, not worse, but like, you know what I mean. You're making this episode. You're doing great. Love you guys. Remember that you are amazing. You are beautiful. I love you. And don't forget to leave a review, subscribe, follow, do all the things. That was your second reminder. And I hope that you have an amazing rest of your week. And don't forget to check out the links in the description of this episode. Find my blog, newsletter, email, etc. There's a lot of fun things down there. And then also make sure you're following me on Instagram and TikTok at the Curly Girl Podcast if you aren't already. And I'll see y'all next week. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And of course, feel free to DM me if you have any suggestions, any constructive criticism, just want to chat, and I'll try my best to answer. I haven't been as good with DMs recently just because I've been so busy, but I'll try my best to answer. And yeah, thank you for listening. You're the best. Bye. Love you. Bye.